Hi everyone, this is Frankie from the Glia Canada team. In this video tutorial, I will be showing you how to fully assemble the Build Your Ownoscope, a 3D printed open source device used to examine the outer ear. This device is designed by E4R Designs and published by Glia. We'll start by reviewing some tools that you'll need for this build. You should have some precision filers, an X-Acto knife, super glue, a glue gun, various pliers, and a soldering iron. Also, a Dremel or a belt sander is needed for the lens portion of this video. We will go over the 3D printed parts you should have right now. There's the handle, battery compartment, two head shells, inner head shell, bottom button, top button, lens holder bottom, lens holder top, handle coupler, neck, specula holder, button lock, button protector, head lock, nameplate, and two nameplate locks. I printed all of these parts at 0.12 millimeter resolution and 100% infill, except for the handle, which I printed at 20% infill. For non-3D printed parts, you will need a AA battery holder, a 10 ohm resistor, a white 5 millimeter LED light, a switch, a three times magnification lens, shrink tubing, and extra wiring. A list of materials can be found in the description below. The lens you should use can be taken from a pocket reader or small magnifying glass found at a department store or online. Ensure it is three times magnification and made of acrylic material, not glass, so you'll be able to adjust and cut it to size. In building this otoscope, we will start by first assembling the battery compartment area. Then we will add a few pieces to this battery compartment area. We'll then switch gears and assemble the otoscope head. And after the head, we will assemble this middle button area. The last step is putting it all together. So let's get started. We'll grab the battery compartment, nameplate, and two nameplate locks. We want to mount the nameplate on the back of the battery compartment using the locks, just like so. Whenever you're going to glue something down, it's always a good idea to dry fit the pieces first. Make sure everything fits nicely, then glue it into place. With the nameplate secured, we now want to install the AA battery holder in its slot. We need to do some minor alterations to the wiring first. We need to cut the black wire to be 80 millimeters long, and now cut the red wire to be 44 millimeters long. We will add the 10 ohm resistor to the end of this red wire, and then add a wire to the other side of the resistor that is 130 millimeters long. So let's cut a red wire 130 millimeters long. I'm going to strip all of the ends of the wires and solder the resistor to the end of the red wire. Your battery holder should look like this. Let's install the battery holder into the battery compartment. This is a tight fit, so take your time. The black wire will go through this hole here and extend out. The red wire will curl under the holder, run along the bottom, and come out through the center hole in the battery compartment. The red wire actually fits in this track here, with the resistor fitting in this divot. And this is the hole that the red wire comes out from. So let's get this installed. First push the black wire through the hole, Then wrap the red wire like so and push it through its hole. You may need to bend the end of the wire to get it pointing up and using a pair of precision pliers really helps here. Once both wires are through their holes, carefully position the red wire into its track. When the red wire looks like it's in its track, 
you can slide the battery holder into the compartment. And push the bottom end so that it clips into place. To get the other end into place, there's actually a small cutout here for the black wire to clear this overhang. Bend the compartment very slightly and just push the battery holder into place. And through this whole process, continue to pull taut the wires to ensure none of them get stuck in the process. The battery holder now sits snug into the compartment. The next step is installing the handle coupler piece on the battery compartment. These tracks on the battery compartment help line up the coupler for a precise fit. These prongs also fit snug onto the battery compartment. Here I'm dry fitting the part. Then I'll apply some super glue and permanently fit the part onto the battery compartment. The next step is to install our bottom button piece. Before we do this, I will run the black wire through a small hole on the battery compartment like so. We want to run the black and red wires through the two small holes on the bottom button piece. The large hole will couple with the battery compartment piece. As a dry fit, everything looks good. Now I'll apply some glue and push the two pieces together. We will also install the button lock piece now. It slips in through this slot and secures the bottom button part to the battery compartment. We will need to install it the right way. There's a small overhang make sure that the overhang is pointed downward, like so. The bottom half of the otoscope is now done. We'll set that aside and start working on the otoscope head. The otoscope head fits together like so. One of the head halves is connected to the inner head part through these top and bottom rails on the inner head. Once that's insecure, the other head half is connected. On the bottom of the head, there's a hole for access to the LED area, and this is where the neck part gets pushed into. It should clip into place. On the top part of the head, the head lock piece fits in and holds everything into place nice and snug. Don't dry fit this piece in all the way as it is difficult to remove once it's in fully. Finally, the specula holder fits onto the front of the head. It's also a good idea to test fit a Welch Allen wing tip specula. I'm not very happy with how the specula is fitting right now, so I actually cut off a bit of the overhang from the inside ridge of the specula holder, and now the specula fits perfectly. The head pieces fit well, Let's grab our LED and prepare it to fit in the inner headpiece. We'll be adding 50 millimeters of red and black wiring to the positive and negative terminals of the LED. Before we do this, we will sand down the ridge around the LED to make sure that it fits perfectly in the LED slot. Dry fitting the LED shows that it fits nicely, so I'm going to solder the wires to the LED now. I'll slide the wires in through the LED slot. I will use a small amount of hot glue to keep the LED in place. Let's put the head pieces together now. Slide the inner head piece into one head shell. Then the other head shell. 
and now we'll install the neck. I was finding that the neck wasn't fitting right. It was misaligned and a little wobbly. It seems like that the new wires were getting in the way, but after bending them upwards slightly, the neck piece was able to fit correctly. I'm going to super glue the neck piece onto the head now. And I'll also super glue the headlock piece into its slot. Finally, I'll super glue the specula holder to the front of the otoscope head. We will now assemble the middle of the otoscope. We'll start by soldering two black wires 50 millimeters in length to the switch. This switch also has these friction fit plastic bits on the side, and we don't need those for this otoscope. So we'll just cut those off and clean up the sides with a filer. Dry fitting the switch into the top part of this button shows a nice snug fit. Now we'll just super glue the switch to this part. It is now time to fit these three pieces together. For soldering, the red wire from the battery should connect with the red wire in the head. And one black wire from the switch should go to a black wire in the battery. And then the other black wire from the switch should go to the black wire in the head. Before we solder any of these wires, we'll dry fit the neck right into the slot on the button holder. It's a very tight fit, but it fits nicely. Now I will super glue the neck into this slot. We'll solder these connections. First, I'll solder the black wire from the head to one of the black wires from the switch. Once these two wires have been soldered, the rest is very simple. You're just gonna solder red to red and black to black. Before we glue the two halves together here, I like to test out the otoscope and make sure that it's functioning correctly. We'll slide two AA batteries into the battery compartment and run a quick test. Now, I find that these battery holders hold onto the battery a little too tight for my liking. So as an optional step, I'll just trim down the battery flaps on the holder with my X-Acto knife so that it's easier to get the batteries in and out of the compartment. Like I said, this is an optional step. And now putting the batteries in, we see that the light is working and the switch is also working. So the next step would be pushing the top half onto the bottom half. And the dry fit looks good, it fits nice and snug. So I'm just going to pry it off here and we'll super glue the two halves together now. We can now grab our handle and push this into place. The handle locking feels a little bit tight for me, so I'm going to lightly file these locking nubs here. And this seems to have done the trick, and the handle fits much nicer now. Let's work on the lens piece. We want to properly size this 3x magnification lens so it fits into the lens holder, specifically the smaller lens top holder. Once properly sized, this lens top holder will fit into the larger lens bottom holder. The lens would be sandwiched between the two pieces. By using a Dremel or a belt sander, the lens can be properly sized to fit into these pieces. 
And finally, the lens part is complete and it can be installed into the otoscope. As another optional step, a button guard can be installed right above the switch. This will help prevent accidentally activating the switch. I will install it on this otoscope using some super glue. This concludes the Build Your Onoscope assembly tutorial. For more information, you can visit glia.org or e4rdesigns.ca. You can also follow me on Twitter at e4rdesigns for additional updates on the Build Your Onoscope and other devices. Thank you for watching.